Hey, everybody, and welcome to the Nine Decide podcast, where we chat with super amazing and inspirational people who pounded the pavement before and after their nine to fives to get their side hustles off the ground. After listening to the interviews with these amazing guests, you'll walk away with a refreshed pep in your step and a newfound motivation to make your side hustle a reality. Hey, everybody, and welcome to Season 1, Episode 10. It's February, although if you're listening, I have no idea what month it's going to be. Like I said, it uh, took me a while to get this going, so it could be a different month than February. But as we know, February is famous for Valentine's Day, and I feel like people have very strong feelings about either loving or hating Valentine's Day. Some people think it's like, I don't know, the Hallmark holiday, and we shouldn't celebrate it. And then some people love it. It's great. It's a celebration of love. Can't say enough great things about your significant other. Either way, it is a holiday that does require thinking about somebody else, if there is somebody in your life that you care about. So, you know, there is that thought that you need to find something, (laughs) something nice, flowers, chocolates, or something. And it is stressful. And so I was thinking that my next guest, I was thinking about her and just like, what a smart business idea this was. And you'll hear her story. Her name is Jamie Alberella. She's a former teacher who actually started this kind of as a as a business. And then eventually, I mean, she left her job and she's doing this full time. But her business is called Forget Me Not Flower Truck. And it is a mobile flower truck business. Brilliant. So if you are in, you know, one of those situations where you're kind of in a pinch and you're looking for flowers, forget if it's Valentine's Day for any situation and you're looking for a like a beautiful bouquet of flowers or inspiration or just looking for something nice to give somebody, um, even if it's not your significant other, you're looking to bring something to an event. She has it and she brings the experience. She has this amazing vintage truck that she brings and she parks at different places, which she'll talk about. So without further ado, this is my interview with Jamie Alberella. Well, thank you so much for doing this. I really appreciate it. And I'm really excited to talk to you and kind of hear your story because like I said, I saw you on Instagram and then I started (laughs) going through your whole page and I was like, this is so cool. I have to talk to you. So right now I've been a teacher for years and I just had this last year was a maternity leave. And um, I decided and with my husband a couple months ago, I think like officially in April that I was going to resign. It didn't really make sense for me anymore to work with three kids. So I resigned. And then with that being said, I'm going to be a stay at home mom. It kind of pushed me into starting this whole business. So I knew that I've wanted to start a side business for a while. Well, wait, tell everybody how many kids you have first. So you started working this. This was your last maternity leave, I'm assuming. Like how many kids do you have? My husband and I have been together forever. We were high school sweethearts. We got married. I've been a teacher and it was a special ed teacher, fifth grade in New Jersey. And I loved it. It's been wonderful. I was a teacher for a couple of years. Then I had my first daughter, Savannah. And I continued teaching. It was obviously like hard for me, you know, having a daughter. And I went right back to work when she was just a couple months old. And then when she just turned one years old, that's when I got pregnant with my daughter, Tenley. So then when I was pregnant with Tenley, I continued working. And this is where things get a little crazy. But I found out that she had a heart defect when I was 20 weeks pregnant. So the plan was just, I continue to work and long story short, I found out that she was going to have to have heart surgery when she was born. So fast forward. Yeah. So my daughter was born at the Children's Hospital of Philadelphia. So I actually had to move there when I was 37 weeks pregnant. So I worked up pretty much right until like my due date. And then I had to move to Philly. So with my daughter and my husband. Yeah, we moved to Philly. You were not working. You just left your job to move there prior to giving birth, knowing that she was going to need a transplant. 
And it's kind of crazy. The whole thing's crazy. So I didn't know that she was going to need a transplant. I knew she had a heart defect. Initially, they said it was HLHS, which is hypoplastic left heart syndrome. And then from 20 weeks being pregnant over the next couple months, every time I went to CHAP, I kind of found out something a little bit different and a little bit more specific about her heart. They told me I needed to move there 37 weeks. That way, if I were to go into labor, like I needed to deliver a CHAP, you know, for bed. They didn't want me having her at a local hospital. So we had to continue to work being a teacher up until I was 37 weeks pregnant. Then the next day, I literally like packed all my stuff, went to Philly. And the plan was just to be there for a couple of weeks. And she came 10 days early. So I was only there for like a week. And she came early. I had her. So she was born February 28th. And she was doing great. She was doing amazing. You know, she's beautiful. Overall, had a great like birth experience. Even though like you would think like, oh my God, you're having a baby that needs heart surgery. And long story short, it was a great birth experience. And then we found out that she was going to have to have heart surgery at four days old, open heart surgery. So she was born on a Thursday. Her surgery was supposed to be Monday. And a doctor came in and uh, was, you know, going over the surgery for the next morning. And they stopped us and said, actually, we decided as a team that she's no longer a candidate for the surgery. She's not going to make it out. Like she, we won't be able to take her off bypass. So with that being said, they canceled the surgery and we were kind of at a standstill and a lust for words. And then uh, fast forward from that, a week later, she was listed for a heart transplant and a roll really went upside down. So she waited there at Children's Hospital of Philadelphia, and I waited with her every single day for five months until she was five months old, and she had a heart transplant. Oh, yeah. Wow. So for like a short period of time, like you said, before she was put back on the list, you thought that they had just said that she was not viable for a transplant, and they had just like, what was the option there? It's so crazy because CHD, congenitive heart disease, It's so foreign to so many people. It was so foreign to me before all of this. So basically, I never knew she was going to need a heart transplant. I knew she was going to need heart surgery. You know, it was going to be a reconstructive surgery. And that's what they said when I went for my first initial appointment at 20 weeks. And then when she was born, they saw the function of her heart was not the quality that they were hoping for. So her name is Tenley, Tenley Gray. Her middle name, Gray, I chose that for a couple of different reasons. One, I love Grey's Anatomy. And two, the name Gray, like the color, uh, all along they kept saying, you know, she's not a black or white case. You know, she's somewhere in that gray area. So that was where her middle name came from. So they decided that, you know, it was like two weeks old that she needed transplant because the surgery her heart just wasn't strong enough to make it through the reconstructive surgery. That's why they listed her for transplant. And, you know, there's a long detailed process to that. That means she was eligible to be a candidate for that, but she had to wait for the perfect heart for five months. And when you're a baby, obviously there's only so many hearts that unfortunately become available and that you're a match for. Yeah. So my husband had to go back to work all along like so he was at the hospital with me until like four or five weeks and my daughter was there so we had an apartment for you know what we thought was going to be a, a three four week stay it turned into months so because of that he had to go back to work and the world kept going on and I was just like it was weird I was stuck there and so I was on maternity leave so I had her in February by planned on just taking off my maternity leave until the end of June. So the end of the school year, and then I was going to go back in September. Mm -hmm. And that was the plan. And then, you know, each week that went by was like a heavier weight on my chest of like, oh my goodness, not only am I like stuck in the hospital, but you know, my health insurance is through my school and I'm a teacher. And like, it was just, oh, I can't imagine trying to do anything else because you're just 
waiting. Yeah. I just can't imagine that. But super thankful for friends and family support system and Ronald McDonald House. We ended up moving there. I lived there for four months. So Ronald McDonald House of Philly was wonderful. They helped out so much with food Mm. and meals and just toys for my other older daughter, Savannah. How old is your daughter now? Tenley, who had the heart transplant, is now, so she's two and a half. So she finally got her heart transplant at five months old. And then it was really rocky recovery within the first 24 hours. We thought we were going to lose her and she was on ECMO. And it was super, super scary. But then she pulled through and we were out of the hospital two weeks later. And she went home for the first time, six months old. She's just like a normal little crazy two-year-old. She's, I call her my wild child and we always joke around. And I don't know where her heart came from. We always joke around. It must've been a wild boy because that girl has a, some fire in her and she makes me nervous all the time. She's always jumping off of something or. That's incredible. I mean, I can't believe you guys went through something like that, especially as a new mom, as a parent. I know. incredible. My husband and I still like all the time, like, we'll just like look at each other. Oh my God, like our daughter had like a heart transplant. And we still can't believe like this has been our life. So we came home and because of health insurance and, you know, a bunch of different reasons, I went back to work. So I came home, she was six months old and I went back to work as a teacher. And that's how I met Shannon. And thankfully, I was paired to work with her and we were co-teachers and we worked so great together. I was so thankful for that. So I was back at school and I I really love teaching. I truly do. But, you know, it was super hard and conflicting with everything that I've been through and just like deciding going back to school and now leaving my daughter. I Everything we prayed for was just to be able to come home and be together as a family and then like having to go back to work full time. Oh, it was hard. I think it's hard for every new mom to go back and leave their kid to just be like, this is, you know, it's very difficult, but I can't imagine going through that and getting to that place where all you want to do is bring your baby home and then leaving them to go back to work because that's what you have to do. Did you leave them? Did you put them in daycare? Did you have a nanny? Yeah. So that's something else. So being that my daughter's immune suppressed, especially in the first So we did quarantining before that was like the cool thing. Truly, like my daughter had to wear like masks before that was in. And like we quarantined before, I don't know, we didn't have a joke about it. COVID came around, you guys were like, we got this. Literally, literally, like that's everything that like everyone started doing when COVID came. Like we've already been doing that. So uh, when I went back to work and because she's immune suppressed and the first years, what's uh, the riskiest? People have had transplants, especially babies. I couldn't send her to daycare. So she, thankfully, the moms are great. So my mom and uh, my husband's mom. So they split time between them. So the girls didn't have to go to daycare, which was amazing. I just went to school every day. I was teaching. And then I was getting ready for Tenley's first birthday, which was a huge ordeal. And uh, we found out a surprise that I was pregnant with (laughs) my son, Kipton. And we were like, oh my God, you know. <laughs> but that wasn't planned. Just, <laughs> you didn't have No, any. so it was, it was a surprise. <laughs> and like now, like I look back, like, you know, I laugh and it's like, he's everything that I needed that I didn't even know I needed. And he's just so wonderful. But at the time, like everything I just went through, I was just, everything was going back to, I don't want to say normal. Um, right. Everything was just somewhat back at work. And well, that's you know, a scary experience well. too. It's almost like a PTSD type of oh experience, yeah. I feel like so it's like to be pregnant and to think that not that that would necessarily happen to another kid, but to yeah. go through something like that, I, I would imagine it's not like you had a lot of time to recover oh, and from that emotional exactly. trauma. Yeah, so I was truly terrified. And percentage of for something like what happened to Tenley, there's only like one percent chance of like that you'll have a baby that needs a heart transplant. So she was like that 1% chance. But then for it to happen again, it boosts your chance to like 2%. So even though it was such a small percentage, it was still super scary. I was very, very scared in the beginning. And then I went to CHOP and I had some different heart echoes, fetal echoes, and uh, 
found out everything was fine, thankfully, heart-wise for my son. And like I had a couple of them along the way, but that as soon as they found out, it made the whole pregnancy much more enjoyable. I had him and then I decided that I was going to take a whole year off maternity leave just because of everything and COVID and having a daughter who's immune suppressed and teaching virtually and all of that was just so crazy. So I took a year off maternity leave and my husband and I have always kind of toyed around with me starting a, a side hustle. I didn't know exactly what that was going to be. I've always had a love for flowers and I, I live. So kind of a little backstory of where I live. I live actually only like 20 minutes from where I grew up. It's still kind of the same. I live in the middle of a golf course, which is like super weird. It's like an old farmhouse that Oh, that's so cool. Um, like in the middle, like actually in the middle yeah. of the course. So people are playing around you. <laughs> yes. So they like look out my front window and there's a whole five, you know, on the green. And oh, that's so cool. My house is an old farmhouse and it used to be all farmland. And then eventually, I guess at some point, all the farmland sold and now it's a golf course. Anyway, we love it. It's a little weird for, you know, people who are not used to it, but we love <laughs> it. And Over the years, we've been doing so much work to our house and we have five acres and I have a love for plants. I grew up loving, you know, flowers, cut flowers. But like I said, I've been saying with my husband for a long time, like, what can I do on the side or what kind of business? And just out of curiosity, uh, the side hustle, like idea, was this because you wanted additional revenue or were you just like, uh, you know, I'm not feeling fulfilled in my day job? was the reason kind of like, I always knew I wanted to start a side hustle. What was that that you like? Why? Why did you feel that way? Good question. So kind of maybe I think a little bit of everything. Not that I wasn't feeling fulfilled. I do love my love my job teaching. But yeah, like just revenue and just like having something to call my own. I grew up around small business owners. My my dad or, you know, my parents, you know, started a small business. My husband and his family, they have a small business. And I think every single one of my mom is one of six kids and every single one of them have, has a small business. So I kind of just been surrounded by small business owners. And yeah, so I kind of love that, love that idea. I think there's like kind of several reasons of why I wanted to. And my husband and I, I don't know, for some reason, we always like to like, have all these projects. I don't know why <laughs> you would think like, I know, like you're busy enough. I feel like that's how I yeah. mean, we are. I yeah. feel like with the side hustle, though, is it like, were you thinking kind of always long term, and we could kind of get into that? Or were you just like, I just want something on the side? I love my job. I just want something that's like my own that I'd love to just kind of stay as a side? Or are you were you and your husband always having these ideas of like, what could I think of that would eventually I could parlay into a full-time career. Yeah, I think for sure. I think the sense of like, especially when I had Tenley, it definitely became like, what could I do that I could like stay home, at least like take a couple years off of teaching? What could I do that I could like stay home? And, you know, I have lots of passions and flowers has always been one of them. I grew up, my dad was a native landscaper and you know, so my house was, I would walk outside and, you know, there's just wildflower meadows. And so I've always just kind of had the love of flowers. And my best friend just got married a couple of months ago and she was having her bridal shower and I was in charge of all that. And I was like, well, I'm going to do the floral arrangements for that. And I did that and I loved it and it was great. And then I went to Nashville for her bachelorette party. And Nashville is great. Have you ever been there? I haven't. It's on my list of places to go because I had friends that went to school there and they're like, you have to go to Nashville. It's amazing. (laughs) So I just went to Nashville in May. So when I was there and my husband and I, like now it's been a couple of years. So it's pretty much since I had Tenley, we've been, you know, just talking and brainstorming different ideas of like, what could I do? You know, this small little business, side hustle, whatever you want to call it. And then I was in Nashville and I saw a flower truck. I took a picture of it. And I sent it to my husband and I'm like, this is what I want to do. And I came home and we spent the next three weeks scouring the internet and I found a truck and uh, I bought a truck three weeks later. Yeah. So kind of crazy. So there was a truck in Nashville. It's called Amelia's Flower Truck. And uh, it really inspired me. And when we came home, yeah, I found a truck uh, out of all places. It was in Tennessee. So I made my husband 
volunteered, obviously. He was like <laughs> super pumped on it. Uh, to down to Tennessee uh, with his truck and trailer and picked up this truck and brought it home. The truck um, is so cool for anyone that is blue. Now, did you paint it when you got it? What did it look like? Because it so is amazing. Look, I love the look. Of it. <laughs> Thank you. So I really wanted a 1960s truck. So even though it was inspired by Amelia's flower truck in Nashville. And so I started doing all this research that I could of just basically any flower truck that that does exist. So there are some that are more so like down south and like some southern cities. But I wanted to do something different, unique and put my own spin on it. My husband's been a truck guy, grew up kind of around trucks because, you know, we live in the country and that's that's what people do around here. <laughs> no for fun. They're in the trucks, move um, the country, live in a yeah. golf course, all go yeah. to the territory. Yeah. So I really wanted a 90s Ford and considering it's how old, obviously it's super hard to find something that's in decent condition. So that's why my husband ended up going to, you know, Tennessee to all the way down there to pick up this truck. And he brought it back and, you know, it's like super dirty and it's like this teal, but overall, like body wise, it looks great. And I'm like, okay, so we're going to paint it cream and we're going to do the accents, this baby blue. And I had all these plans for it. And my husband's like, well, I don't know. Why don't we just like wash it and see? I'm like, washing the truck is not going to change the look of it. And he's like, let's just wash it. I'm like talking about like, what do you know? So then he washes the truck with like, just like Dawn dish soap. And literally takes like layers of dirt away and it looks amazing. So I sent like the picture, you know, I took a couple of pictures and sent it to my friends and they were like, oh, I love the color. I love the color. And I was like, okay, I just had to write that in there. Okay. Let's keep the color. Let's not paint it. It looks so it's um, the original color. It looks so vintage. I mean, I think it adds to the vintage look yeah. and feel of the the sixties truck. When I saw your flower businesses and things like that. But an actual flower truck, I had not seen a flower truck before. And that's what I think was, I was drawn to your business because I was like, what exactly is a flower truck? Yeah. So when I like started telling people that I was going to like start a flower truck, I think people looked at me with like three heads, like, <laughs> what are you talking about? So there are some flower trucks that do exist randomly in the country. And what it is, is basically it's like a mobile flower bar. And the whole concept is build your own. Okay. So what I wanted to do, and like I said, I put my own spin on this and I really wanted to convert an old pickup truck into a flower bar in the sense of a lot of times, you know, my husband would get me flowers and they were beautiful. Don't get me wrong, but they weren't necessarily like my cup of tea or, you know, not the exact flowers that I like. Right. So I wanted to create an experience that people were able to pick the flowers that they want and that they like for themselves. So I turned the back of the truck into basically a bunch of different choices, of different flowers, and you get to choose different stems that you would like and create your own bouquet. And then I wrap it for them and then the customer can go on their way. So is the idea of the flower truck, it's like you're driving around to different locations and then you're doing the work or are you letting the client kind of pick it and wrap themselves? Or are they just pointing to it? You do the wrapping and they pay yeah, for it. Both. And, oh, so I do cool. a little bit of everything. I do have some pre-arrangements that people can just come and they can just like pick up a mason jar of different flowers. But then I also walk up and be like, I want an arrangement. I don't know. I'm not good at this. You do it for me. And then I just pick out whatever flowers I think and I make a bouquet. And so um, like on the truck, all the flowers that I have on the truck are all local seasonal blooms. So all from either my garden or they're from other local flower farms. So something that was super important to me was just supporting other local farmers. And I also love that most of them, if not all of them are women as well. So to me, the closer, the more local, the better. Obviously, since I like literally just started months ago, I can only grow so many flowers in my own garden. I didn't mention this before. During like our whole planning phase in the three weeks that we were looking for a truck, we also like started a garden. You so know. you you're actually growing your own flowers as well as like sourcing yeah. them locally. So as soon as I came back from Nashville and I like knew I wanted to do this, we basically like my husband and I like would put our three kids to bed. We would get in bed and we'd go on our phones and just like start researching. And we would just look up and different blogs and everything that we could just learning about like growing flowers and selling flowers and 
what could we do ourselves? So we started our own garden. We bought like florets. If anyone's into doing their own flowers, uh, Flora is a company. They're based out of Washington and for flower farmers. Oh, cool. And they're just like amazing. So we bought their book. We got it. We just started reading it and reading all these blogs. And yeah, we started our own garden and started growing our own flowers. And, but like I said, since we only started this couple months ago, you can only grow so much in that amount of time. So with that being said, that's why I'm sourcing whatever I don't grow. I'm sourcing from other local flower farms, which has been awesome because then I get to, I've been meeting other people that are 10 minutes down the road from me and who are doing something similar. And it's just, you know, dive into this whole new territory that I don't really know too much about. I'm learning so much and it's just awesome. I think it's so cool. I say it's a unique business. I'll say that. I haven't talked to a lot of people that have started a flower truck and I feel yeah. like you've got to know what you're doing to do that. You have a, obviously a passion for that and also know how to put together like bouquets and things like that. But you also have other parts of the business that you do, right? I saw on your website, you rent the truck, you do events like yeah. weddings and things like that. Was that that came after the initial like the base of the business or the original part of the business is the flower truck and that's driving around to different locations. So my plan for this year is to do local blooms, seasonal blooms. So flower season is only so long since I started all this just a couple months ago. I knew when I like launched my business officially that I would only have so much time. So this past couple weeks, I've been going to different like farm markets and People have been able to build their own bouquets on the track where I've been making bouquets for them. But long-term goal, I really want to be able to do bridal showers and baby showers and yeah, weddings and be able to go to parties and bring the whole experience to the party and have people love the process of putting a bouquet together just like I do. So that's kind of long-term goal. And it's been great so far. I actually have like couple parties next week. And yeah, so things that crazy already. So I have a couple of questions because I feel and I think it's I'm so excited for you. I feel like you already look so professional just three months. I looked at your website, your Instagram. I mean, everything looks amazing. I don't know if you did all the website just looks incredible. I am just curious to know like how this went from sort of your teaching to this idea, then where did the decision come for you to officially kind of leave? Was that kind of the plan to have something that was more flexible? But did you just make that decision this past? Yeah. So I made this decision to officially resign from my teaching position in like April. So I was on maternity leave like the whole last year. And then, you know, my maternity leave would end in June, you know, being a teacher. My husband and I were just like, yeah, it won't make sense for you to go back to teaching with three kids, especially Tenley is immune suppressed. We couldn't split it up, you know, three kids between the moms anymore. That's too much. And I don't want to send Tenley to daycare and cost of daycare for three kids. You know, my oldest is just now in preschool. So it's not even like she's in, you know, kindergarten yet. So we made the decision in April that I would resign. So. I like called my school and I was just like, I'm actually doing this. Like I'm resigning. And it was super scary, super scary. But at the same time, it was kind of freeing in a way because like I knew like just like being a mom, like this is like, I want to be home with the kids. Mm-hmm. I want to be home, you know, with my kids during the week. And it's just a phase of life, just a season. And I meant to be home with them. So I kind of had peace with that. And then, uh, yeah, so that was April. And then, like I said, my husband and I always kind of talked about, you know, doing a side hustle and he's been pushing me. I'm like, yeah, what do you not say? I have three kids. I'm, what do you want? It's me to, so like, great you though. I start a business now. I feel it's so great though. I have to say like your husband, not that I've ever met him, nor do I know him, but I think it's just, you know, and talking to all these people and kind of tips for other people, it's like to have a supportive partner or a significant yeah. other who's encouraging of what you want to do to follow your passion and you know, I don't think it's by accident that a lot of people that I'm talking to happen to be women. They happen to be mm-hmm. mothers. I think there's a lot that's like, I think important in life. And not only do you get to a place where, you know, want to do things that are feel passionate about that are your own, even if you're happy in your job, I think it becomes kind of like you have three kids and you've got to sort of balance this and you want to have it all. I think it's really cool when you have somebody that's at home that's supporting that move. And it's like the both of you making that decision. So I think that's awesome. Yeah. So I officially decided that like, we're going to start a business with the flower truck. Yeah. The end of May. That's when we 
decided to buy the truck and uh, get started. So it's been a crazy, crazy couple months, but here we are. And so far, everything's been going really well. And it's just, even though I'm still home with my kids, obviously, like during the week, it's just like every day, I'm able to, I think being a mom, you really find ways to balance and manage your time. So with that being said, it's like put the kids down for a nap, and then I'm out in the garden, and I'm doing like the flowers or where it's like, oh, hey, kids are coming to the car, like we're driving to a local flower farm, or, you know, on Tuesday, we're doing this. And so right now, flower truck is mainly on the weekends. I do have some things here and there during the week, but all the prep work and all the work that goes into it is happening during the week. That's what I was going to ask, because I was going to say, is it just you in the business, you and your husband, obviously, but mainly you, you don't have any staff, right? So it's just you. No, as of now, it's just me. And it's working well. And then my husband helping me. He's mostly just like the driver (laughs) of the truck. So because it's a, yeah, in 1961, it's not only is it manual, but it's it's called three on the tree. I didn't know that was like a term. I don't know. Three on the tree. I don't think I've ever heard that term. (laughs) Yeah, me either. So it's a stick, but it's on the column. I don't know. All they know is... It's difficult um, to drive, basically. Yes. So I'm still learning. So right now, it's just me. And I mean, eventually, it's crazy. It's already been a little bit of time, but there's been a lot of interest in a fire truck, which has been great. So is this a one, because you have three kids, is it only a weekend business? I know you said you're working on things, obviously, for the business during the week, and you could do that. Mm -hmm. But are you only driving the truck and parking at places and doing things with it on the weekends? Mostly, yes. Like, for example, so it's mostly on the weekends, yes, Saturdays and Sundays, because that's a lot of times when there's farmers markets, things like that. People are having like, you know, parties typically happen on the weekend. But for example, like tomorrow night, I'm supposed to be going to a farmer's market. So it'd be like a Thursday night. However, they just canceled it because of the rain. I'm a little upset about that, but it's supposed to rain a lot tomorrow. I do have things that do happen during the week, but primarily on the weekends. And then will you just get coverage for somebody to watch the kids? Like if you have to be out of the house, because I would say that's got to be like when I think about yes. you being the only person in the business and having to be yeah. like mobile and going to locations, which I'm assuming sounds like you do a lot of farmer's markets. Yeah. I mean, that's, that's on you to be there, which is also hard because that's a commitment to physically be somewhere when you have three kids. Yeah, so that's been a little tricky. So right now with the grandmas are helping out. We've kind of just been taking turns between the grandmas. I have a sister who helps out a lot with the kids. So she's been great as well. You can um, always bring the kids. Yeah. Yeah. So like, for example, like this weekend, like it's like a harvest fest going on. So there's going to be a bunch of activities. So I think like all of us are going to go and, you know, my husband will go off with the kids walking around and, you know, doing the different activities and obviously be with the truck and. What a great guy. Oh I love your husband. I have not met oh, him. Yeah. But he sounds like a great guy. So I have I have a couple more questions and then I promise not to keep you too much longer. So yeah. I love the name Forget Me Not Flower Chuck. Yes. And I know there's this mm-hmm. like a special reason that you came up with that name. So I just wanted you to tell us a little bit about how you came up with the name for you. So when I was trying to think of a name, you know, bouncing things around, a bunch of ideas down on a piece of paper. And I just kept coming back to Forget Me Not. And forget me not, the flower is actually the flower that they donate life, America, that they use every year when it's donor remembrance day. So forget me not, the flower just kind of stands for remembrance. And of course, that has a strong meaning to me. Obviously, my daughter had a heart transplant and, you know, my family We've just been dedicating the last, you know, couple of years to just really promoting organ donation awareness. And I figured what better way than to kind of combine all aspects of my life together and uh, naming it Forget Me Not, kind of after, like I said, you know, the flower, but then also in memory of my daughter's donor, whoever that may be. Oh, I love it. Yeah, I think it's a great name. And I love the meaning behind it too. So anyway, I think that's wonderful. So my next question is, is for people who are listening who are interested, I think there's a lot of people who dream about, think about, talk about doing side hustles, wanting to do something, 
you know, whether they're not fulfilled or whether they, some people just want to have something on the side that's their own. They never have any intention of making it a full-time job, but don't know, you know, how to take the first step. What tips would you offer people? It could be in general, it could be related to like your specific business. I mean, I think yours is very unique, but like what tips would you offer people who are looking to start a side hustle or thinking about it? Okay. So quite a few different things. One of the first things would be like build a team around you. I don't necessarily mean like a business team because like, like I said, like I'm just, my business is just technically me. Build a support system. So like my husband is my huge support system. You know, he's the one who pushes me to pursue things and he's been my helper and, you know, also my sister and the grandmothers. And anyway, so I think just like surrounding yourself with people who are going to support you, not necessarily, it could be a business partner, but just people who are going to support you on this journey that you're on, you know, starting your side hustle or business, whatever it may be. Another point would be to be unique. And that's something like I really strive when creating my business, forget me not flower truck. There are a few flower trucks that do exist out there, but I wanted to do something even more unique and put my own spin on it. Do your research, educate yourself on your competition and what sets you apart from your competitors. So like, obviously there's tons of florists, especially in like, I'm in New Jersey and I'm in Hunterdon County. So just that area alone, there's actually quite a few flower farmers and florists. But what sets me apart is I have something that no one else has. You know, I'm bringing the whole experience to the customer and received great feedback. So another point, be passionate. Super important, obviously to be passionate and just like to truly believe in your product or business, whatever you're doing. Obviously, I feel like if you're not, you know, 100% passionate about something, you're not going to be able to pursue it the way you should, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, that's a great one. Did you always know you Um, were interested in flowers? You did, but were there a couple of other things you tried before it was this or was this kind of like you were thinking, thinking, thinking this was the first thing you went with? And this so I wanted, to be- I knew I wanted to do something like I've been saying, like, you know, I always thought maybe one day I'd open my own flower shop, something like that. But there was nothing that I was like, that's definitely what I'm doing. Because kind of like what I said before, I think it's super important to be unique and like have something that sets you apart. Mm-hmm. And there was nothing that I was super passionate about yet. But I was like, that's what. That's me. That's my business. That's what I want to do. As I said, I always kind of knew it was going to be flowers, but I just didn't know which aspect that was going to become. Be flexible. Obviously, like, as I always say, like, there's no such thing as a plan. I think my life has kind of always been a proof of that. Whenever you think you have a plan, but to be okay with things not going according to plan. Like, for example, a couple of weeks ago, I was getting my logo done on the side of my truck and being that it's the truck is 60 years old. When they went to go put the vinyl sticker on it and they start to peel it apart, peel it back, it literally ripped off all the paint. I was like, oh my goodness. Like I'm launching my party in one week and I'm having a photographer come take pictures of my truck, which is everything. And uh, I was like, okay, just got on my phone, started calling different people. And long story short, the one side of my truck looks great. And the other door, you know, it's a <laughs> little rustic and antique looking. You're like my truck has a good side and a bad side. Yeah, you know, and whatever. It like, it goes with the truck, so it doesn't really matter. But um, my whole point is just like, you have to go with the flow. And when there's going to be hiccups along the way. So I'm not saying like, don't plan. I think it's super important to plan, but be okay with things not going exactly as you expected them to. And my last point would be take other opinions from others with a grain of salt. I think kind of going with my other points that I was saying before, you need to be super passionate and like truly believe in your business. And, you know, when I told just different people like, oh, I'm going to do a flower truck. Some people were like, oh, like interesting. Or, you know, <laughs> if I like listen to everyone's opinion or 
I think you have to know when I think other people's opinions are important, but at the same time, don't let it take you off course. Because I think it's really hard. And I think it's really important. Because like the whole idea of this podcast really is to, I've always been a wannabe side hustler, and I've just never done it. And I think there's a lot of things that deter people like, you'll suggest something to someone and they will to your last point. It's so true. Like they'll say something, they'll be like, oh, like one or two people might dismiss it as like a far-fetched idea or something that wouldn't make sense. It's like, you have a great job or you've got this, like, why would you start? You know, you have so much going on. And I think you can get lost in those things. And if you don't have, and this goes back to your number one point, which I thought was really good is building your support team of people that are your cheerleaders and people that really support you and want to see you succeed. And like, could be, You just got to research it and do it. So I think that's a really great tip. And I think that seeing, I hope that people who are listening, who can see other people do things, and and it's not like you were given the business, right? I mean, you created it, it came out of a Mm -hmm. passion of yours, will be inspired to start something of their own. And I think your business is so cool. I just like very fun and different and not something. Thank you. Yeah. Kind of like what I was saying before, I think it's like super important to be unique and have something, you know, that makes you different. Like why, why should someone come to your business or, you know, why is someone going to buy something from you? And, you know, hopefully it's because you stand out for some reason. That's what I really wanted to do. And all along, like when creating, you know, the flower truck, my husband's like, okay, well, what do you want it to look like? And I'm like, well, I can't show you because it doesn't exist, but it's in my head. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, like it was a hard process to, you know, to go through. Now the number one thing that people have been telling me multiple times, even like when people aren't buying necessarily my product, they walk by me and they say, wow, what wonderful presentation that you have. Like just, you know, the presentation itself is so, which is awesome to me that it's like that I'm getting feedback from people who aren't even buying my product, but still it's stepping and it's catching their eye and they're saying like, you know, that's great. Or you know what? Like, I don't need flowers today, but like, where are you going to be next week? Because I want to come find you or... Well, that's why I thought yeah, you're, you're the business, the the events business. I mean, I was just thinking like how cool it would be to have that presence of your truck and the whole idea of it is just such a cool addition to any event, like a wedding mm-hmm. or something like that. And such yeah. a fun thing instead of just like handing out flowers to people as a gift as they leave to have like a customized mm-hmm. kind of build your own. The whole experience of it and your brand, you know, that's the other thing I think is I love your other point and then won't keep it much longer, but I thought the be unique is so good also because like you said, you said it so well was again, a lot of people think of side hustles. Maybe they're like, oh, I'm interested in flowers, but there's a million florists out there. And you said that exact same thing. It's like, well, how do you do something in that, you know, that kind of area, like with flowers, but make it unique and make it like your own. And Mm -hmm. that's what you're doing. You're building your brand and that's, what's cool about it. And that's what I thought seemed really neat about you. Yeah, I'm just uh, really excited about everything. And, you know, so far, everything's going really, really well. And, I can't yeah, it's been a crazy, crazy couple months. So my last two questions, and then I promise to let you yeah. go are one, I just was curious about the winter. So do you close down in the winter? I'm still like brainstorming. So I'm definitely going to slow down, but I'm not going to close down. What I want to do is continue the same experience, just in a slightly different way, but opposed to obviously like fresh blooms. I want to do like greens and eucalyptus and holly and, you know, like, you know, Christmassy arrangements, but I still want to provide that same like build your own experience. So I'll definitely be slowing down during the winter, but I will continue to bring, as I call her, Miss Little Blue Truck around. Well, that truck you can do anything with. So that truck you can transform (laughs) into one of those very cool, like Christmas kind of trucks. So yeah. And then lastly, well, thank you. This has been amazing. And I love, love, love hearing your story because I think it's incredible and very inspiring. Actually inspires me. But I wanted to hear just lastly, just give us the information about where everybody who's listening can find you on online, on Facebook, on Instagram. Where where are you? So it's literally just my name, Forget Me Not Flower Truck. So my website is forgetmenotflowertruck.com. And then my Instagram and Facebook are the same exact thing, which is just at Forget Me Not Flower Truck. Cool. Well, thank yeah. you so much, Jamie. I really appreciate it. I know how hard it is to do these at 